I got pigs. I got two pigs. My neighbor, I just got from my neighbor. They're probably about eight, nine weeks old now. They're both females. They're open gills. They ain't never been bred. And I named them Ruby Tuesday. And uh, uh, you'll get there for a while when you're going down the road. You see that big sign on the side of the road that says Ruby Tuesday. Amen. And it won't be very long that they'll be big enough, old enough, and fat enough, amen, on apples and stuff like that. We'll eat them too. Amen. 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 I love to talk to my animals, amen. God said right there, I'm a very, very unusual person, they say. My neighbors say that I'm a little touched in the head, uh, uh, that I'm a little crazy, uh, but I'm telling you, when something happens up there on Hill Street, they come to me. If there's some stuff going on, uh, some people in the neighborhood that ain't supposed to be there, because I got signs in my yard that said, I don't dial 911. I am 911 on Hill Street. I don't call the police. I deal with it myself. I'll try to talk with you and everything. And if that ain't going to work, you will leave the hill. Amen? But I talk to my animals. God said right there, but ask now the beast, and they shall teach thee. Amen? Amen? And then he said, in the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. Amen? So I talk to my chickens. I got birds and doves and everything. I got doves as big as chickens and chickens as big as turkeys. Everything's fat on Hill Street. Amen? And then he said this in verse 8. He said, or speak to the earth. And I was telling the gentleman earlier about talking to yourself. I talk to myself. I answer. I do the whole nine yards. And he said, but this, and it shall teach thee, the earth will. And what about the fishes of the sea? What do they do? They'll, that shall declare unto thee. I want to read a little stuff I got wrote down, give you a personal illustration that happened in my life not too long ago, and we'll go to the house. Say, man, God, we thank you for tonight. I thank you for these men that's here. God, I thank you for those that left. God, I pray, Father, you give them travel with grace. Mercy upon your highways. Keep your hand upon them. And uh, God, use this little old place. God, that you set aside. I'm thankful tonight. Uh, God, that I've got a place that I can come to. And God, get this message off my heart that you gave me. And I pray, God, that you use it for your honor and glory. Uh, God, I pray that you might meet the needs here, whatever they might be, the needs of these men, uh, when they leave and go back to their home church, God, that they might be a blessing their pastor, and their pastor might not have to worry about where we've been, what we're doing, but we'll be found faithful and be found in our place and not missing in action. Amen. amen. God, now have your way, Father. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Of course, in Jesus' name, amen. I want to amen. preach this right on victor or victim. I'm tired tonight of being the victim. Amen. Right. It seems like everywhere we go, we're considered the victim. Can I say unto you tonight, the Bible says that we are more than conquerors through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm tired of, of people beating me down, telling me that my God ain't nothing, that he's never done anything. He's never going to do nothing. Can I say to you tonight, if God don't never do nothing for me no more, he's done enough. That's right. He saved me from the devil's hell. Amen. Amen. I ain't got a burn with Buddha, uh, Mohammed, Harry right. Krishna, right. Joseph Smith. I'm going to heaven. Amen. Right. And right. I'm tired of burn with that bunch. Right. I'm tired of being the victim. It's about time we be the victor. Amen. Right. I want to read this to you. And uh, my pastor, I was in college and everything, and and my pastor said, Brother Sims, I need you to start writing in print. I said, okay. So I started writing in print and everything. Next night, he come, uh, next week, he come back to me. He said, Brother Sims, start back writing in cursive. And so he couldn't understand my cursive. He couldn't understand my print. And, and I can't, sometimes I can't even read my own writing and everything. But I want to read you this. Uh, and, 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 and I'm telling you, we'll give you a personal illustration. And then we'll leave. Amen. God gets his greatest victories out of apparent defeats. You believe that? When the, when the doctors come in, I've got, I told y'all to pray for Riley, uh, Brother Andrew there, and his mom, and Dan, Brother Andrew knows a little bit about her. Uh, she, any day, she could draw her last breath. Amen? She's 12 years old. She's a very active young child, uh, but she's got an aneurysm on her aorta valve. Uh, it's, it's real bad. Uh, she's got this disease and everything, and it seems apparent to the doctors that she's not going to make it. But I remember somewhere in that King James Bible, 
David said there's only a step between me and death. Right. So that next breath you take will be your last one. Amen? Right. So I believe her odds are 50-50, just like ours are 50-50. But wouldn't it be something if, if there she is, she's laying on her deathbed and everything, and just all of a sudden God moves in and, and God heals her and touches her and raises her up. She becomes a preacher's wife and sings for God and all this stuff. And God gets the victory Amen. out of a parent defeat. How often, brother, does it seem the enemy triumphs for a little? Seems like the devil's winning right now. Amen, don't it? It seems like them JWs and, and them Mormons. I always had a problem with them Mormons. Until Brother Joe, Brother Joe helped me. Here's, here's what he told me. Brother Daniel, come here for a minute. Come here. Oh, 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 oh. And Brother Joe told me, it seems like everywhere you go, man, you see them jokers peddling, 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 peddling. They never stop. Right. And their God is pushing them. Their God is pushing them. Right. You follow me? Right. And it seems like, man, we just struggle. We're, we're, we're trying our best to do something for God. And here we are. And their God. Walk toward me, son. Come on. Their God is pushing us. Come on. Their God is pushing us. You see what I'm saying? You get this. Their God's pushing against us. Right. Right. And our God's pushing for us. And their God's pushing them to go do something. You can sit down, son. And Brother Joe, he told me, he said, that's the difference, brother. You don't understand. Their God is pushing them from the back, and their God is pushing us from the front. And it just seems like every time we get a little ground way, a little lead way, we back up. And I'm just simply saying, I'm tired of being a victim. Amen. It seems like, it seems like every two steps I take, man, I take three or four backwards. just seems like I'm never getting ahead. It seems like it seems like you're thinking. I feel like Job sometimes. You ever feel like Job sometimes when it rains it pours? I mean, it wasn't that long ago, man. Me and my wife was coming back from preaching a tent meeting up in Cordova. The battery light come on on the truck. The battery's gone out. Come and find out it was the alternator. All that quit. Truck quit and everything. Well, then we got the van. Went back up there. Got the battery out and everything. Charged it up. Took it back. Told my wife drive home. Drive quick. King's business requires haste. That's why speed. That's what the Bible says now. The king's business <laughs> requires faith. Right. Now, that ain't going to work when the law put on Moses pull you over. And the law, that ain't going to work too good. But the king's business requires faith. So I tell them why. Get in the truck. I mean, go to the house. Don't stop. Don't slow down. Get to the house where the battery goes out. So I pull up the Chevron down there in Silicaga. Put me about $10, $15 worth of gas in there. Go in there and pay for it. Come back out. Crank it up and everything. Pull it down the drive. Bam, won't move. Oh, Lord, man, what's wrong with it? So I'm like Fred Flintstone, man. I've got to put on gas. And I'm push, trying to push it backwards, you know. Try, just trying to get the, the transmission engaged a little bit. Maybe I'll do something. Sure enough, it starts catching up and everything. So I snatch that bugger down in first. Stop it, buddy. I mean, the way we go, and I'm pulling out in the highway, by the sideways. Locking trucks coming. He's hitting the horn, doing the one finger wave at me and everything. And I'm just trying to get home. Get to the house and I had to get my wife out there and tell her, come out here and help me push this thing backwards. So we push it back into the yard. She said, what? What's wrong with it? I said, don't, don't, don't. So then I go in there and she's got me some food cooked and everything. And, and I not eat and we do a little devotion, you know, and I go in there and I take me a shower and everything. And I lay down, air conditioner, boosh. Wow. Hollered at my wife. I said, hey, honey, come here. I said, where's that fan at? She said, I got it in there. Why? I said, air conditioner went out. She said, well, I'll bring it. I said, no, I got it. I get up and I go in there and get the air conditioner and everything. But it, I mean, the fan, and I, I put it up on the chest drawer there and everything. I got it just right on daddy, buddy. The wind's blowing and everything. And I, I'm, I've done a laid back down. I got my old hand propped up like this, and all of a sudden, the smoke detector said, beep, 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 so I, I got a message that I love it. When it rains, it pours. It don't sprinkle no more, man. It pours. God worked it out. Man, God in our church, brother, come up to me and asked him what was wrong with the truck. I told him. He said, well, let's go get an alternator and, 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 and fan belt for it and everything. I said, brother, you don't understand. I got to my, He said, that ain't what I said. Let's go get you all that. So he took care of that and everything. And then the van sitting at the house. And I just bought two brand new tires. Can't afford two more. And, 
Brother Stephen comes to me, and I, I wish I hadn't said his name, but he comes to me and he said, what? He said, Brother, I heard you got to drive to Mexico. I said, yeah, it ain't going to be much longer. I got a meeting out there and everything. He said, you can't go on them both tires. I said, no, I sure can. He said, bring the truck up to the store. And we'll fix you up. You know, okay. I told him, I said, Brother Stephen, look, you don't understand. I ain't got to. He said, I didn't say nothing about no money. I said, bring your truck. We'll put some tires right. on it. Right. We'll work something out. Amen. It's the word of God. So, hey, there is. It takes a little rain to make love grow. Amen. A garden will not grow without some rain. Right. You can plant and do whatever. It ain't going to grow without right. some rain. Amen. Seems like everybody's getting a victory but us. The old boy. <laughs> and it seems like God lets it be so. And then all of a sudden, he comes in and upsets all the work of the enemy, overthrows the apparent victory of the right. enemy, amen, and could be said turns the way of the enemy upside down. In doing so, he gives a great deal larger victory than we would have known if he had not allowed the enemy Right. In the first place. Amen. What about, uh, let me give you this. What about three of the Hebrew children? Man, what about the victory God got there? What about the, man, what, what if the three Hebrew children, man, when, when they brought them up to the fire furnace, and there they are, they fixed to throw them in, they done heated up the fire about seven times harder than what it's supposed to be and everything, and here the three Hebrew, Hebrew children, they get up there and everything, the fire's hot, and, and, then, and then they say, I ain't going in there. God wouldn't have got no victory. The enemy would have won. Good. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I'm, just saying I'm just saying, man, it seems like every time us, the children of God, get a little ahead, the devil rears his ugly head, and that's his job. It's what he's supposed to do. Right. I want to talk to you about my, my old chicken named Scrappy. See, I got fighting chickens. It's in my blood. I'm a seamless. I still fight them. I just don't fight them for for money no more. But I got these fighting chickens at my house and I'll turn them loose, you know. And I mean, buddy, if you ain't never seen nothing like chicken fighting, man, I'm telling you, you know how in, in school, you know, we used to walk up to each other and, and, and we'd say something like, you cross this line right here, you know, and then we'd back up and give them room to cross it, you know, and all that. Or we'd put the little chip on our shoulder, you know, and, and say, knock this off my shoulder, you know, dare them and everything. And, and, and we might say something like, don't you say that again. You say that again, you're going to pay for it. You know, and one of them is scared, the other one's proud of it, and right. one of them's hoping the other one just walk away, you know. And, and but chickens ain't that way. No, sir. My neighbor down the road, man, I, I've got certified bona fide, and, and, and be honest, we 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 just won the the eighth derby in a row. Eight Sims boys, eight derby in a row. I told you I found them. I don't find for money. No. I don't understand. I can't get my cousins and everything to understand that when God saved my soul, He does something for me. How can you still be doing that? You say you're saved. Right. How are you still doing it? Why didn't they get what I got? Yes, sir. Boy, God filled me with something that day. They ain't got it. Right. I don't understand. Get at it, man. Fight your chickens. Why are you betting money, man? It's covetousness. The Bible's to get there. But you call yourself a Christian. I don't go to the cock fights no more. I just turn them loose in the yard. Let them fight a little bit. It's them, man. They got to do it. If they don't, they'll go crazy. They'll, they'll pack themselves to death. It's like when you get all these men together and the testosterone is coming up, you know. The next thing you know, of the man you're ill with each other and any little thing teach y'all. You gotta find some kind of relief. If you don't, man, you'll be fighting with one another. So you gotta get some kind of same thing with cock fighting, man. Every once in a while, I'll just turn them loose, man, and throw a little bit of corn out there, and I mean, buddy, they go at it. My neighbor's got, I, I, I fight Arkansas travelers. He fights what they call grays. Hatch. He come up to the house. I got a little old BB red named Scrappy. Man, I, I'm telling you, listen to me. This is a bad little rooster. He ain't, he ain't as big as a fart. But I'm telling you, he thinks he's Goliath. And I mean, he just whoops everything on the yard. Man, it don't matter male, female, cat, dog. He don't care. He just whoops them all. Anything fair game to him, man. Oh, Hulk come down and got him one day, man. I said, my Lord, Scrappy, run that mouth too quick, buddy. 
I'm watching them fly off in the distance and everything. I'm about ready to go in the house, and all of a sudden I look up and they're coming back. And old Scratch had done put the hawk and made the hawk bring him back to the house. Amen. I'm talking, he's that kind of chicken. You know what I'm talking about, brother? He's just that kind of chicken. It don't matter. Let's get at it. Let's fight. Got you talking, done. Adam brought this gray up to the house, and I told him, man, boy, I said, Adam, I ain't fighting him. He little big, big red, I ain't fighting him. Adam said, come on, man, let's fight. I said, no, Adam. He's just a little bitty old thing, spunky and scrappy. That's why I named him Scrappy, man, because he just loved to scrap. I told Adam, I said, if Adam brought this gray up there, and I told him, I said, Adam, take the chicken home and go to the house. Adam got right up there to the end of the yard, and I seen him when he just dropped the old chicken down in my yard. Wow, okay, Adam. Now, you got to understand something. You can go on TV and see these people that call themselves dog whispers, cat whispers, horse whispers. I'm a chicken whisperer. I understand chicken talk, okay? And I'm fixing to interpret some chicken talk for you, okay? They're, they, they, what they'll do is one of them get over here and they'll eye each other, you know. And what he'll do is he'll he'll start pecking, scratching around on the ground, and then he'll start finding him some grass, and he'll pick it up and he's going. Burr, 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 burr. And what he's saying is, "Come on down here, bit of bad boy. I got something for you." And then this one over here, he's doing the same. Burr, 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 burr. Uh, and he said, "What he's saying is, is, I'm on my way. I'm coming. Just give me some time, and I'll be there." But I'm telling you, there comes a time when they get about this close, buddy. Talking's done. Fight starts. Right. Talking's done. It's over. Man, boy, they were going at it and everything. I mean, this big old rooster, he's, he's like Colonel Sanders' rooster like this right here. My little scrappy, he's over here. And this this, this, this big chicken man, Goliath, he'd fly up. My little chicken go under and turn around. When Goliath turned up, bloop, upside his head. He was doing pretty good, man. He was holding his own and everything. Then all of a sudden, old Goliath rung his bell. He got him. I'm sitting there looking at my roaster. I'm going to tell you something. When they, when they get to fight, don't get close to them. They'll put a hurting on you, man. They get in that, that pit bull. I got pit bull, too. They get in that kind of frame of mind, man. Well, like the MM, I was telling somebody about the MMA and the Ultimate Fighter and all that, man, where they turn on the referees sometimes. They just that kind of fighting chickens. I'm sitting there looking at Scrappy. I mean, he's sitting there all dazed and everything. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at him and I'm telling him, Come on, Scrappy! Get up, Scrappy! If you don't get up, he's going to kill you. Scrappy all dazed and everything, just laying over there and the chicken's pecking at him, wanting him to get up. I messed up. I got a little bit too close. No gray. His old gray rooster, hatch rooster. Got a little bit too close to him and everything and turned on him. Come up my leg. Just all up my leg and up my side. I'm sitting here trying to fight the chicken off. Get him off of me and everything. Trying to throw him down. But what it done, Brother Andrew, was it gave Scrappy enough time to catch his breath. And I thought he was dead. But he just got his bail wrong. You know what I'm talking about, Brother, when... You're boxing and everything, you know, and just all of a sudden, bam, that guy catches you up and you're like, but you ain't now. And so what the other boxer does is, he, is he'll go up and he'll grab the other boxer and rest on him. Trying to catch his breath and get his bearings back because he got his bail wrong. That's all that happened, Scrappy. He just got his bail wrong. The next thing I know, old Scrappy, man, I thought he done struck her on you. If you know what that, that means old Gary done went to the heart, went to the lung. Now he's spitting out blood. I'm looking at, I'm still trying to fight this rooster off and everything, get him off of me. And the Scrappy's over there, and he's doing this for him. I thought he was trying to throw up blood, but he was trying to crow. And I'm telling you something, when that little rooster got his breath, boy, he let out one of them old rebel jail crows, man, just Somewhere from deep down inside, man, he mustered, ur, 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 and the fight was on again. But this time it was different. Scrappy watched him this time, and every time he would fly up, Scrappy wouldn't fly under him. Scrappy let him hit the ground and just, I mean, it was just that quick. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say Scrappy got tired. 
been the victim, decided he'd be the victim for a while. I talked to my pigs. I talked to my chickens. And God talks to me through his book. And I think it's somewhere over there in the New Testament somewhere that the Savior took a lick. And it looked like they had him beat. <laughs> Looks like they had him down for the camp there for a while. But they put him on the cross. They nailed him to the cross. They beat him with a cat of nine tails. They beat him so bad that he, his vision was more. He didn't even look. He looked like a pure hamburger man. Then they took him down, placed him in a grave, a lowly grave. But you know, son, I told you I speak redneck and they about 30. Three days, something like that, Brother Andrew, he let out with a rebel crow. Amen. And it was so loud that the ground quaked, caused the earthquake. He come up by the ground. He arose victorious, the Bible Amen. says. Death, where is thy sting? Christ, where is thy victory? Right now. They ain't gone. Right. It's gone. Right. Amen. What are you trying to say, preacher? Ain't you about tired of being a victim? Ain't you about tired of the J.W. brother? They come to my house. This is all God says, don't even bid them God's face. I don't even right. talk to them. Right. Amen. Here's what I do, brother. They come to the door. I'll open up the door, you know, and they say, we're with the J.W.s. I look at them and say, the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of words lest any man supposed. Bam. And I'm through Amen. with them. Amen. Let them all go to hell. That's what they're going to bust hell wide open. If God don't do something, they're going to die and go to hell. Yes, sir. God said don't bid them God's feet. Don't give them a ear. Don't give them the time of day. Right. Got some work needs done around here, brother. Call the Mormons. You know why? They believe in working for their salvation. Put their butts up on top of the roof and let them roof it for you. Let them work for it. Amen. That's what they believe anyway. Aquarium at the house. I, they, they got this movie out, Jesus is the Lamb, Lamb of God, or something like that. Mormons put out that knucklehead up there, Mel Gibson, the Passion, and all that. Man. These Mormons riding down the road and everything. I said, Come here, boy, I need some help. What do you need? What do you need? I said, I need John to pick this 30 gallon aquarium up and get it up off this counter right here and put it over there on that time. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got it. We got it. So they moved it over there for me and everything. I told them, Have a nice day. Well, we like to talk to you, but have a nice day. Now get the little car down, right down there, little. I told you, I'm, I'm ready. I, I don't do things like other people do. I, I understand that. I know I'm a little different and everything. Ain't you tired of being the victim tonight? Amen. Don't you want to be the victor? Yes, sir. No. So how do you do that? Let me give you two scriptures. Two scriptures, amen? And we're through, okay? I promise. You know what it means when a preacher looks at his watch? Absolutely nothing. Amen. I'm mean, fine. Amen. Somebody kept somebody want to go was saying something about I think said something about Brother Andrew, brother, you done said. You know you're gonna wrap it up, you're gonna wrap it. And Paul kept Paul said six different times in one book. Finally, my brother. <laughs> then he talked a little more. Amen. And they something about, look here, man, you a preacher. Preach. Right. Amen. It's in you to preach. If you're a yes, called preacher, you don't want to shut up. Amen. God gave you a voice. He told his man of God, he said, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Right. Amen. Cry loud. Amen. Let her rip. And it's three, hey, look, I'm a preacher. I might not be the preacher some other, but, but some vessels in the great house, there's vessels under honor, some to dishonor, whatever, man. If you're this guy that can do this, and God bless your heart, but that ain't me. Right. Right. God sends me to dope heads. Why? Because I'm a dope head. Amen. You see what I'm saying? God ain't going to send me to the rich and things. Amen. No, no. God sends me. God said, remember them in Hebrews. He said, 13 and things. He said, remember them that are in bond. So that's where God sends me, back to the dope heads. Because I used to be a dope head. Still an addict. It's just that I'm addicted to the ministry now. God right. changed my addiction. Right. I'm still Amen. an addict. He just changed my addiction. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 98, real quick, man, I promise you, we're through. Psalms 98 and verse 1. 
Well, when it's got a hold of me, not when I got a hold of it, that's what changes your life. When you get a hold of something, look here. When 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 back when I was a dope head, everybody and, and, and I think when you when you start talking about stuff like that, man, you might you ought to make it exceedingly sinful as you can, where people don't enjoy it. They don't want to go mess with it. Amen. Right. But when I was selling dope and selling drugs and everything, man, everybody called me up because they knew I could get the best. They, if they wanted cocaine, they knew I could get the best. If they wanted marry, it didn't matter what they wanted, they called me because they knew I could get the best. That day God saved me on a Sunday. About 11, 12 o'clock hour, boy, that night, I called them and I told them, look, y'all make me over at the scrabs out here in the morning. Boy, I got some good stuff. They knew I had some good stuff. I said, call them all! Y'all meet me over on the scrap out of it. Box out of it. Boy, we're going to hop up in that train. And I had to steal a Bible. I didn't even have a Bible. I stole the Bible. And took it up in that, in that box car. I got down on my knees. And I mean, buddy, you should have seen them, man. They're, they're rolling up their sleeves and, and they're getting the bands out and getting the needles and spoons and everything ready and getting the roll of papers ready, man. They know I've got the good. They know i got the good stuff. Amen. Amen. I raised them old pocket and pulled out that John, that New Testament Bible, John 3, 16. I said, y'all fellas, listen. For God <laughs> so loved the world that he gave his own to God. Amen. Who's word of Amen. Amen. Hey, I didn't know what I, I, I didn't understand the full meaning of it. I just know what God had done for me the day before. Yeah. I wanted them to get on it. I wanted them to have something. They didn't want it. Right. About killed me. Flogged my head and kicked me and beat me. Because you don't understand. They're dope heads. They're expecting the goods, man. I let them down. I tried my best to give them something. I'm telling you, I ain't never got over man. It's just a guy. Yeah, right, right. They didn't want it. You know what that guy said over in Job? When things begin to go wrong, he come to Job and he said, Job, look, man, these people, these people, they came down and I alone have escaped along to tell them. And I, I've always wondered, why me, Lord? Why'd you pick me out? Right. Why'd you come to me that Amen. day? Huh? Why didn't you go to And hey, he said right there in Job, so you could go tell him. So you could go tell him. Look here, I don't know where you're from. I know where he's from and everything. I know Brother Andrew, but some of you, I don't go back to your own community. You know, in Mark chapter 5, that's a perfect picture of me. Cut, shot, stabbed, and everything. And I wanted to go with him. Mark chapter 3, verse 14, God chose, Jesus chose 12 disciples. And he ordained them that they might be with him. What a ministry. What do you do for a living? Oh, I just hang around God. <laughs> well, have you?